Most people think fasting is simply the absence of food, an empty space on the plate, a skipped breakfast. But what if that empty space isn't emptiness at all? What if it's the doorway to one of the most mysterious survival mechanisms your body has carried for thousands of years? When you stop eating, your body doesn't freeze, stall, or shut down the way most people fear. Instead, it begins to whisper, to rearrange, to awaken. Beneath the surface, where no mirror can reach, an ancient intelligence stirs a biological rhythm built long before modern life drowned it out. And as that rhythm returns, something remarkable begins to unfold. Helen, like many of us, once assumed fasting was just hunger and willpower. But the moment she stepped into her first true fast, she sensed a shift, subtle, quiet, but undeniable, almost as if her body had been waiting for this silence. Because fasting, at its core, is not deprivation. It is the beginning of a conversation your body has been wanting to have with you for years. The moment Helen's last meal faded from her bloodstream, her body shifted into a different kind of awareness, not dramatic, not loud, but intentional, like a city preparing for nightfall. Deep inside, her immune system didn't panic. It listened. It read the signals trickling through her blood, the soft decline of insulin, the gentle drop in growth factors, and it understood what was coming. A period of scarcity, yes, but also an opportunity. Cells that normally hum along in the background suddenly paused, almost as if waiting for instructions. Hormones recalibrated. Energy distribution tightened. Systems that never speak in daylight began to exchange quiet messages in the dark. Helen didn't feel any of this, of course. All she sensed was a strange steadiness, the kind that comes when the body stops juggling incoming food and finally focuses inward, and beneath that calm, tiny decisions were already unfolding. Should energy be stored or redirected? Should inflammation rise or fall? Should old cells be repaired or marked for removal? Fasting wasn't starving her. It was reorganizing her. In the silence, her internal world wasn't shutting down, it was preparing. Preparing for a shift that only begins when food steps aside long enough for the body to remember what it's capable of. By the time Helen crossed the 12-hour mark, her body had entered a threshold it rarely experiences in modern life. The last traces of her previous meal were fading from her bloodstream, and with them went the familiar rush of glucose that usually dictates her energy. Yet instead of slipping into chaos, her immune system shifted into something wiser preservation mode. It was like a quiet city dimming its lights, not shutting down, but conserving power for what truly mattered. Inflammation began to decline, the way a small fire settles when no one adds more fuel. Oxidative stress eased, giving overwhelmed cells a moment to breathe. Even her white blood cells, those microscopic guardians, started recycling worn-out components, trimming waste that could ignite future disease. And while all of this unfolded beneath the surface, Helen simply noticed that she wasn't as hungry as she expected. A gentle clarity settled in, the kind that arrives when the body no longer chases sugar highs and lows. What she didn't know was that this clarity was the first sign of a deeper transformation. Her immune system wasn't weakening. It was streamlining, choosing efficiency over excess, preparing itself for challenges it had long postponed. And as the hours stretched forward, a new kind of strength began to take shape, quiet, deliberate, unmistakable. By the time Helen reached the late afternoon stretch of her fast around hour 16, her body began stepping into a deeper, more deliberate transformation. The gentle clarity she'd felt earlier didn't fade. It sharpened. Inside, her cells were responding to a subtle stress signal, the kind scientists call hormesis, a beneficial challenge that forces the body to evolve rather than retreat. Enzymes that usually stay quiet began activating protective pathways. Antioxidant defenses rose like shields being polished before battle. Her immune system, once content with routine patrols, started rethinking its entire strategy. Instead of pushing hard and fast, it chose precision, reorganizing its forces to conserve energy while increasing effectiveness. Helen felt this shift in a way she couldn't name. A calm alertness, a steadier heartbeat, a sense that her body had slipped into a cleaner rhythm. Hunger still flickered now and then, but it no longer demanded attention, it felt more like background noise, 
a faint reminder of the old energy cycle she was slowly leaving behind. Her cells were no longer reacting to scarcity, they were adapting to it. And as the evening light thinned, her body prepared for something even more profound, a kind of internal housekeeping that only begins when true quiet settles in. When Helen reached the 24-hour mark, her body crossed an invisible line, one that separates ordinary metabolism from a deeper, more strategic mode of survival. With no new calories arriving, her cells began a quiet but sweeping cleanup effort. Damaged proteins, faulty components, and cellular clutter that had lingered for months were finally pulled into the spotlight. Immune cells, especially macrophages, moved with new purpose, acting like meticulous janitors combing through every corner of her internal environment. Inflammation dipped even lower as unnecessary reactions were shut down, freeing energy for far more important work. Helen didn't see any of this, of course, but she felt a shift an unexpected steadiness, almost like her body had stopped relying on willpower and started relying on wisdom instead. What she couldn't sense was the decision forming inside each cell. Keep what's useful, recycle what's not. It wasn't aggression, it was refinement. And this quiet refinement was only the prelude, because as her body settled deeper into the fast, a far more remarkable process, one reserved for true metabolic silence, was preparing to awaken. Somewhere between hour 30 and hour 36, Helen's body unlocked a biological switch that modern science considers one of the most extraordinary survival mechanisms ever discovered. This is the point where the quiet cleanup of earlier hours transforms into something far more purposeful autophagy, the cellular process that doesn't just clear debris but rebuilds life from the inside out. Under the microscope, it would look like tiny bubbles forming around damaged parts of her cells, gently pulling them in, breaking them down, and repurposing them into fresh, functional components. It's not destruction, it's renovation. It's her cells deciding, with incredible intelligence, that aging fragments, malfunctioning proteins, and worn-out structures no longer deserve space in a system striving for resilience. As autophagy ramped up, her immune system experienced a noticeable shift. The burden of old cellular waste began to ease, freeing immune cells to operate with sharper precision and less confusion. This clarity matters. Research shows that when the body clears out cellular debris, it reduces the false alarms that often trigger chronic inflammation and autoimmune misfires. And Helen? She felt none of this directly. Yet she sensed everything indirectly. A strange lightness settled into her muscles. Her mind felt clearer, as if fog she didn't know she had was finally lifting. Hunger no longer felt like an enemy. It felt like a signal that something powerful was unfolding beneath the surface. But even this renewal wasn't the peak. Her body was preparing for an even more remarkable transformation, one that only reveals itself when fasting reaches its deepest rhythm. As Helen's fast moved beyond the 36th hour and drifted toward the 48-hour mark, her body stepped into territory few people ever experience. Autophagy had already swept through her cells like a silent renovation crew, but now the transformation reached a level even more astonishing, the activation of stem cell-driven regeneration, with nutrient levels low and damaged immune cells already cleared away, her body sent a message deep into the bone marrow. It's time to rebuild. This wasn't symbolic. Research from the University of Southern California shows that prolonged fasting can trigger stem cells to generate entirely new white blood cells, effectively refreshing the immune system from the ground up. Inside Helen, outdated immune cells, slow responders, overreactive ones, or the ones that had simply grown tired were quietly dismantled. In their place emerged a younger army, faster, sharper, more adaptable. Her immune system wasn't weakening, it was renewing, almost as if the biological clock had been wound backward. She didn't feel younger in a dramatic way. Instead, she felt lighter, like her body had been carrying a weight she didn't know existed. Her heart rate steadied. Her thoughts felt streamlined. Even her breathing deepened, as if her lungs had more room than before. What was happening inside her wasn't magic, but it felt like it. It was her own biology, performing a reset only possible under conditions of true metabolic quiet. This was the reboot the moment her body didn't just survive the fast but used it to become something stronger. 
Yet even such powerful renewal requires balance, and her body knew there was a line it should never cross. But even as Helen's body embraced this remarkable renewal, there remained a truth her biology never forgot. Every powerful tool has an edge that cuts both ways. If fasting continued too far beyond its natural rhythm, the body would stop interpreting it as a reset and begin to read it as true starvation. In that state, efficiency turns into conservation, and conservation into compromise. White blood cell production can slow. Hormones drift out of balance. Healthy tissue muscle, not just fat, may be broken down for fuel. The same stress that once sharpened her defenses could, if pushed beyond wisdom, begin to dull them. Helen didn't feel danger yet, but her body understood the principle. Fasting works because it ends. Its strength is in the cycle, not the extreme, and knowing when to pause is just as important as knowing when to begin. As Helen's fast deepened, another transformation unfolded not in her bloodstream or her bone marrow, but in the vast ecosystem of her gut, where nearly 70% of the immune system quietly resides. Without the constant influx of food, especially sugars and processed fats, her gut bacteria shifted into a different rhythm. Harmful microbes that thrive on constant feeding began to weaken, while beneficial species, those linked to lower inflammation and stronger immunity, started to rise. It was like her intestinal city was finally able to sweep its streets, repair old structures, and rebuild balance without the daily traffic jam of digestion. These helpful bacteria produced short-chain fatty acids that strengthened the gut lining, preventing unwanted particles from slipping into her bloodstream and triggering immune chaos. Helen couldn't see this microscopic renovation, but she felt an unexpected calm settle into her core, as if her body had discovered a quieter kind of order. Her gut wasn't going offline. It was recalibrating, teaching her immune system how to stay steady in a world filled with noise. By the time Helen finally decided to end her fast, it didn't feel like she was simply choosing to eat again. It felt ceremonial, like stepping out of a long, quiet room where her body had been speaking in a language she had never taken the time to hear. Fasting hadn't punished her, it had revealed her. It had shown her the intelligence woven into every cell, the resilience humming beneath every heartbeat, the way her body could reset, rebuild, and rise again when given nothing but time. As her first bite brought her back into the rhythm of ordinary life, she understood something she hadn't known three days earlier. Strength doesn't always come from abundance. Sometimes it comes from restraint from letting the body breathe, repair, and remember its ancient wisdom. And while not every fast needs to be long, and not every person should push their limits, the principle remains the same. Periods of stillness allow the body to become its strongest self. Helen would return to her normal routine, but she would never look at hunger the same way again. To her, it was no longer an inconvenience. It was a doorway. A reminder that beneath the noise of modern life, her biology still knows exactly how to heal. And if you've ever wondered what your body is truly capable of, this journey into fasting is only the beginning.